having the knowledge and having the mindset will help you change your behavior. Yep. Um, you know, health and fitness is relatable to any other aspect in life. But, but I heard somebody say this one time, you know, you can't control much that happens in your life, right? But the one thing you can control is what you put in your mouth. That's one of the one things in your life that you can control. A hundred percent. And when you put good things in your body, you're going to get good things out of it. When you're fueling your body well and fueling your body the right way, you can get even better. Yeah. And so many cheerleaders have been making it through without a lot of this, right? But just think of the potential of how good they really could be when yeah. they were fueling their bodies like the athletes that they are. You know, you use the word fuel and that's, that's in the title of three of the lessons that you provide in CCA. Um, and we'll get get in on an overview on those in a minute. But on the fuel thing, it's like you can't buy a diesel truck and put regular fuel in it and then expect it to run. Yep, it's just like a car. Or you can't buy a sports car, like a high-end sports car, like a Lamborghini, and put regular unleaded fuel in it. That's an analogy we actually use a lot in sports nutrition. Um, I like like to change it a little bit for cheerleaders because you know not everyone knows how a high-powered car works, right? right? Um, but you're you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what it is. You are if you're going to put regular in a car that needs you know the top end, it's not going to ru run right. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to last as long. The same no. thing goes with the body. If you're not putting the right things in, it's not going to last as long. I know. I know. And that's why I feel, and we both feel, that this is such an important topic to cover. Um, when I decided to create this course, this one and the strength and conditioning one was at the very top of the list. Mm -hmm. Because I feel that neither of those get gets enough when it comes to education. Yeah, I, I mean, I grew up never having a strength program to follow as a cheerleader. I mean, we had conditioning during practices, of course, don't get me wrong. Um, and we were encouraged to like go to the gym at, um, after practice or before practice, you know, off days. But we never had anything to follow. And that's something I found so, so helpful. Once I graduated, I did an internship at Princeton University and I was a strength and conditioning coach. And I realized there's so many exercises that we don't learn about as cheerleaders that could 100% help us. Yeah. Like all those Olympic lifts, like if we learned how to do those at a young age, like we would definitely be set up for success, especially our male cheerleaders doing co-ed stunting. Like those are the same exact body movements, basically. A power clean is toss to hands. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. for those males who maybe were in all-star their whole life or didn't come from the football team or wherever we find our male mm -hmm. cheerleaders, they don't know to do that. Mm -hmm. And that could be such a huge help. Creating muscle development as early as you can has so much benefit and it creates the right technique, which will translate to creating the right technique on the mat and during practice, right? But but it also goes back to the fuel. Mm -hmm. You can't build. Right. Yeah. You, you can't have the gains that you want. You can't build the strength and build the muscle if you're eating candy all day. Right. Or, or not enough. Yeah. Or if you're not eating enough, you're not going to be able to build muscle. Instead, you're going to lose muscle. And that's what I think we see cheer happen to cheerleaders a lot. Um, you might not know it's happening. I mean, with me, I was always very secretive about it and you couldn't tell from the outside that I was struggling. I was never, I never had that six pack abs, but I was struggling and no one knew. Instead, it was encouraged even. And I think that's a big issue because I did lose a lot of muscle and I ended up losing skills and getting injured. And that's kind of a common theme with a lot of people. It is. And I think when people think of working out, especially with females, they see the picture in their head of somebody on stage 
at a bodybuilding competition. And they don't want to look like that. So they're not going to work out because that's what they see. Right. But and that's not the case. <laughs> how much do you have to eat to look like that? That's the trick, right? You have to eat so much, so much protein in order to build. And even then, it's mostly genetics. Right. And they so. train, a, they do special diets too when it comes with those yeah. bodybuilders. And that's not what we're prescribing here. The goal for us is not to look like those bodybuilders, even though, because they are on these specific diets and specific training schedules that are just not attainable for cheerleaders at the moment, especially if they're in their sport. Right. But the key is they are working out and they are eating in a certain way. Right. And yes, our cheerleaders do not want to look like bodybuilders. And I completely understand that. They don't have to look like bodybuilders. That's not the point. There should be that less emphasis on how a cheerleader looks. It should more be about how they feel, how they're, how strong they are mentally but and physically. Yeah, because this is a sport where you lift people. You have to be strong. Mm -hmm. And um, I f feel like a lot of the emphasis is on the flyers to be smaller rather than the bases to be stronger. And that's, I think, where a lot of these disordered eating issues come from. Um, and also just not being educated on it enough, not talking about it. it, it still being taboo. I'm so glad that you're doing this because it opens up the conversation. And that's what really needs to happen to make a change.